Uh, thank you very much, Armando, and I'm really delighted to be here. Uh, th thank you to APOD for the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, CDC's role in the context of obesity prevention. Um, uh, because my work is, is primarily in global health, I'll uh, talk a little bit about some of CDC's global work, but also a, a bit about CDC's role in obesity prevention within the United States. It's, it really is a pleasure to be here um, at the, the, the first APO the Obesity Forum, because I think this really exemplifies the bringing together of government, of community, of academic approaches, um, and with, without that sort of um, multi-sectoral approach, I think uh, addressing NCDs and obesity is going to be quite challenging. Um, so I'll, I'll start by saying a little bit about uh, CDC's strategic priorities. Um, as you can see here, uh, these are the, the five priorities that uh, Dr. Tom Frieden, CDC's director and, and CDC, have identified as key to what we do in, in uh, public health. Uh, at CDC, we like to count things, so we strengthening surveillance and epidemiology is the starting point. Um, CDC provides support for state, tribal, and local health departments, and you saw some examples of that earlier, um, the discussion around the community transformation grant. So that support is both technical support and also uh, funding for certain types of programs. Um, the, the basis of what we do is, is science, so advancing evidence-based health policies and programs is a core part of CDC's function, um, and importantly, even though CDC is primarily a domestic agency, uh, amongst the five strategic priorities of CDC is to improve global health. So engaging with programs like APOD is a key part of, of what we do at CDC. And our, our core mission is really the last point that you see here, and that's to prevent illness, injury, disability, and, and premature death. Uh, so how, how does CDC go about doing this? Um, we, we are a science-based organization, and so our hope is that everything we do starts from a base of good science. And uh, as I think everybody knows, this is very popularly referred to now as evidence-based public health practice. And I think this is really a matter both of strong scientific evidence, but also taking into account community culture and context. So we have to think about the reality of doing this work in the, in the world. And again, this, I think what, what we're seeing here with APOD is an exemplification of this. So what are the components of that? Um, having some kind of organizing framework, a policy framework, again, good surveillance data, uh, an emphasis on what works, evidence-based interventions, evaluation of what goes on in community programs, because sometimes we need to go beyond the strict evidence-based reviews, and from all of this, we can develop guidelines and recommendations for communities, uh, for clinicians, and for public health practice. Uh, I think everybody realizes that in order to make things happen in public health, we need to draw on resources outside of health and medicine. We never have enough resources in public health to do all the things that we would like to do or that we should be doing. And so excellent communication and a focus on partnership and networks is really a critical part of addressing NCDs and addressing obesity prevention. Um, and then the last point, although while I'm not going to talk about this much, it's an important role for CDC, is providing funding, it's congressionally uh, allocated funding, to states and communities. So you heard about the community transformation grants. Um, there also are uh, CDC-funded programs across public health that go to state health departments. And uh, there are targeted programs for applied public health research as well, including some specifically for evaluation of community-based obesity prevention programs. So uh, what I'd like to do now is give a couple of very quick examples of the type of work that CDC does. It's no way it's possible to cover all of this in a, in a brief presentation, but I think these will give you an idea of, of what CDC's role is. And the first couple of examples are from programs in the United States. And, uh, these are drawn from the Division of Nutrition, Physical Activity, and Obesity. Um, and I, I think these obesity-related indicator reports are a nice example of using data for action, engaging stakeholders, and uh, making surveillance a, a tool for intervention as well as a compilation of data. So what, what are these? These are a series of reports. You can see there are four of them that focus or include foci on 
uh, settings that involve children. Uh, so these are state indicator reports on fruits and vegetables, on physical activity, uh, a breastfeeding report card, and a children's food environment state indicator report. And I think these are compilations of, of data both at the individual level, so individual health behaviors at the policy level, and the environmental level. And I think they reflect the type of information that's needed uh, to mobilize community change. So, and obviously the idea is to consolidate all of these different types of indicators, um, not just to drive public health programs, but also to attract media attention to potentially be a tool for advocacy for these areas. And they do allow states to track progress over time, but I think this kind of data for decision making is critical because it, it brings stakeholders into the process and, as I mentioned before, it al allows us to use this data for applied public health purposes. We're not just collecting data because it's interesting and it allows us to, to get a sense of understand the problem. It allows us to actually take action. And I think that is uh, the, the bias at CDC is towards data for decision making and data for action. And hopefully that's exemplified in most of our programs. Um, a, a second uh, brand new product that I want to draw attention to is, is this one. Uh, this is a new uh, publication and it reflects CDC's role to synthesize evidence and best practices and to draw on those to try to make recommendations for public health practice. So this is a recent review, uh, Jennifer Foltz, Dr. Jennifer Foltz, who's here in the audience uh, and has some copies of this, even though it's, it's coming out uh, soon, an annual review of nutrition. Uh, this is uh, a review of population level intervention strategies and examples for obesity prevention in children. And I think this is a nice example of CDC's approach in that it is based primarily on systematic reviews, so the most rigorous review of the evidence. But it also includes evidence and expert consensus and research and practice tested interventions. So this is more programs like APOD uh, implemented in the field, perhaps not clinical trials, but exactly the kind of information that we need to draw on if we want to contextualize scientific evidence and apply it to make a difference. So hopefully uh, you will get a chance to talk to Jennifer and, and uh, uh, draw on this resource. So um, I'd like to move now to two very quick examples of our international work, which is again collaborative work, uh, and I'll start with a case study um, in Brazil. Um, we, we've worked over the last decade very closely with the Ministry of Health in Brazil. Um, facilitated by a, a large loan from the World Bank, working closely with uh, state and, and municipal health secretariats, and uh, also with university partners and with some help from the CDC Foundation. So very much a, uh, a multi-sectoral, uh, multi-country partnership that is engaging researchers from academia, public health practitioners at the local level, and policymakers at the national level. Uh, the core research part of this has been the GIA project led by Ross Brownson at uh, Washington University in St. Louis and a, a host of partners in Brazil. And, and part of the idea of this project was to develop uh, a multi-country research partnership because we think this is a necessity if we are going to solve global health problems. We're going to have to engage people uh, and, and draw on talent from around the world. Uh, the second part, similar to the, the review I just mentioned in the U.S., was an application of the evidence-based review and synthesis process in a Latin American context to see if we could do something similar, drawing on the Spanish and Portuguese language literature as well as the English language literature. And finally, there was a component of evaluation of promising community interventions uh, in a city in the northeast of Brazil, the uh, Academia de Cidade program, which is an example of a publicly funded program of refurbishing public space in poor neighborhoods, placing community exercise classes there, and then drawing a series of other community programs into those neighborhoods on the basis of that starting point. And um, uh, this uh, program, GIA, is, is well documented in the research literature, more than 20 publications now. It's a very good website, and most of those publications are in Spanish and Portuguese as well as in English. Um, as a public health practitioner, I, I really like this project and the partnership because we've seen it 
not just do a good job and produce publications, but it really has changed public health practice in Brazil. Um, as a result of the positive evaluation of the program Academia de Cidade, it's been upscaled to become a national program in Brazil. Brazil is investing nearly a billion dollars over four years in taking this program to 4,000 sites around the country um, and really investing in physical activity promotion, chronic disease prevention, obesity prevention, tied in with issues of community development and equity and violence prevention. So really an interesting mix of, of efforts. And I, I think a very nice example, this program is now being copied by the United States and we're seeing uh, a Brazilian program being implemented in San Diego in uh, Latino communities in San Diego. And I think many of the good ideas in public health that which spring up around the world have that kind of potential to be shared uh, uh, across countries. Uh, the, my final example uh, is also from a very new uh, analysis just published, uh, led by Felipe Montes, who's an engineering student in a doctoral program on complexity modeling. So, and I think, again, this is an example of the kind of multi-sectoral team required to do good research. We need to draw on smart people from around the world who come from a variety of disciplines if we want to understand uh, the issues that, that influence um, health and obesity. Uh, this is a cost-benefit analysis of Ciclovia programs in uh, four cities in the Americas. Uh, Ciclovias are uh, uh, publicly funded programs which close city streets to automobile and bus traffic and make them available for recreational purposes, walking, cycling, rollerblading, and so forth. Um, the, the one in Bogota is best known. It's 100 kilometers of city seat streets closed for seven hours, 72 days a year. But there are, are more than 100 of these in the region now. It's really taken off. And, and so this was an analysis to get at the return on investment of these programs. And um, uh, on the basis of this uh, analysis, we estimate that for every dollar invested in, in making this public infrastructure available for physical activity, there's a two to four dollar return in healthcare savings uh, due to reduced uh, healthcare expenditures for chronic diseases. So I think a very nice example of a multi-sectoral program that's spreading like wildfire in the Americas. And of course, these programs exist in other parts of the world. There's a quite well-known one in Paris as well. Um, and I think potentially one of the tools that we can use as we get communities engaged um, in obesity prevention. So um, I'll close with just a couple of observations from the types of programs that CDC has been involved with. Um, I think it's pretty clear that chronic disease prevention and obesity prevention are priorities, not just across the Americas, but globally. Um, and this really is the basis for the, the, I think, the success of APOD quickly expanding uh, to many programs in countries around the world. Um, the, the lesson in Brazil is interesting because it demonstrates that physical activity can be a very strategic starting point for national NCD and obesity prevention programs. Um, we've also seen a couple of examples um, on the feasibility of taking community-based physical activity and nutrition interventions that are effective, making them scalable, and that they're politically attractive. These programs are expanding not just because there are papers published on them, but because mayors and city councils look at them and say, ah, this program makes sense. This meets the need of people in my communities, might bring me some votes as well. And I think we have to be very um, aware of the political viability of these health promotion programs as well. Finally, we see that multi-country, multi-sector partnerships really have an important place, and that the type of networks that APOD exemplifies are really critical for growing these programs around the world. Um, and they do give us a chance to be successful in the fight against obesity and, and chronic disease. So uh, thanks very much for a chance to uh, do a whirlwind tour of a few CDC programs, and I look forward to uh, talking more in the panel about this. So thanks again for your attention. Thank you.